So what I was saying is this is a few housekeeping items um, that we want to just make sure we go over. Um, I'll post this, these links to the Google Classroom. A lot of them you've already done. Um, AP Classroom, that's where you're getting your AP ID. Um, the demo site, hopefully we already did. Um, kind of this required exam day documents. Um, I guess I have to control click. There we go. Um, so required exam documents. Um, you should have seen this page, but if you haven't, just make sure we go through it. Um, your exam ticket email, your completed exam day checklist, um, whatever device you're using. Um, my my recommendation would be to to open it up on your cell phone. Um, because then you can take your picture on your cell phone and submit it right back on your cell phone. If you do open it up on your computer, you are going to have to email it to yourself first or like add it to a drive and submit it from there. So if you're wanting to do it that way, make sure you practice doing it that way by doing the demo exam on a computer, taking a picture on your phone, emailing it over. Um, it'll just take a couple, you know, maybe an extra minute in that upload time. Um, so you need some kind of an internet connection, a way to access the internet. Um, and then we're not going to type responses, so we don't really need this. Um, we're also allowed to have class notes, right? The, the cheat sheet we've made, um, textbooks, um, and notebooks are probably a little bit overkill there. Um, and then we're not in art, but down here for calculus, um, if you're trying to type, um, they have this and you're allowed to have a calculator. Um, but otherwise we don't really need that. Um, checklist, right? You need to have your APID. If, if you're having trouble with this, please, please, please let me know. Um, you're gonna write your name at the top of the exam. I think they said initials, um, the exam date, your exam start time and, um, 30 minutes before the exam you want to check in and make sure you're not, you know, they're saying 30 minutes for a reason. You don't want to check in like 30 seconds before or 10 seconds before, because they're, you're going to be filling out your information before. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. The, well, there's, I think there's a difference between the APID Nathan and the, the key, right? The, the e-ticket is what was emailed to you is your, um, is your APID in there as well in that email? I don't know because I don't have an email from them. Or is it just your e-ticket? Okay, so it, it gave you both. Um, so kind of what I was saying is make sure that right we're, we're checking in at least you know, 10, 15 minutes before, ideally 30 minutes, but we want to make sure we have all that information taken care of. Um, also, they don't have this on that checklist, but for us, right, that we've prepped, you know, five to 10 sheets of paper with our initials, with our, with our page number and with our APID. Um, right. Um, double check that your, you know, your ticket says AP calculus, um, whatever you're going to use is fully charged, right? That would suck to, you know, be about to upload. And all of a sudden you look down and your phone's dead. Um, and then you've done the demo, um, we're not typing. So we're handwriting. So we've prepared one set of pages, um, for us really two, two sets of pages. Um, and then going through this stuff as far as exam security, by the way, um, this is kind of interesting, but you know, and I, I don't know exactly everything that, that they've had, but someone shared with me this morning, um, that they've already caught a bunch of students cheating. Um, I think here's the, the official treat tweet. This is from, uh, one of the heads of the AP program. So he said, uh, we've just canceled the AP exam registrations for a ring of students who are developing plans, uh, to cheat. And we're currently investigating others. It's not worth, uh, the risk. So, you know, I don't know exactly, um, what technology they're using to, to figure out how students are cheating, but they've already, 
um, before the exams even started, right? This was uh, yesterday at noon. So maybe it was even on for the Gov, right? This was right after the Gov exam. Um, oh no, Gov's today. Yeah, I don't know what I'm what I'm thinking. So yeah, this was yesterday before before uh, any exams were taken. So, anyways, that's that's really everything. Um, during the exam, once the exam has started, don't hit refresh. Um, don't hit the back arrow. It says if you if you're having issues, um, just try to hit your your key again. You know, click the key again. Um, keep the exam question open on your device so you can see the timer. Right. If you want to be googling stuff, use a, a second device. That's another reason I might use my cell phone to, to actually read the questions because then you can um, use your Chromebook or laptop or whatever you have to to Google um, if you need to. Um, hopefully you don't need to Google anything. Um, when I see the on-screen warning, the time is almost up five minutes before you want to stop working or really, you know, if you're just finishing like writing one thing, finish that. Um, right. I think it's, it's better to submit with four minutes left than to get zero credit because you, you tried to push it. Um, Right. If you don't submit in that five minutes, there's nothing that that ha can happen. You just get a zero. Uh, if you accidentally close your browser, um, you need to go back to that email and click on the e-ticket again. If you can't rejoin the exam, um, there is the makeup exam. You're going to complete this form. So if anyone um, has issues on this this exam, right, you open it up and just it's not loading or you can't upload or, you know, worst case scenario, I'm hoping this doesn't happen to any of us, but, um, and really you don't want to plan on this. Don't plan on this and be like, Oh, I'm just gonna, you know, do it on purpose so that I can take it later in June and study more. You're not going to study more. You're not going to want to study more, right? June is a month away. We're not doing any calculus between now and June. You're going to be less ready in June than you were today. Um, so, Please, please, please don't plan on doing that. But if it does happen, um, right right now, I guess this site isn't open yet, um, but there is going to be a form here. So there's going to be a form where you request a makeup. And so that's something that uh, we'll deal with if it happens. Okay. Um, after the AP exam, um, you are going to have to fill out just a couple questions. Um, so it says, I will sign into my AP and indicate the college, university, or scholarship program that should receive my score report. You need to do that before June 20th. So whichever college you've accepted, or if you're going to a community college, do that as well. You want to have AP send that score because that way, if you pass, um, they're going to give you credit. You don't want to, you know, just send it no matter what if you get a two or you get a one they don't think any less of you there's no consequence they're not going to do anything you've already accepted um but if you get a three four or five then you're getting that credit and then it says i will report information about cheating attempts so if you know someone was cheating um you're going to just let me know all right so that's uh that's this guy so that's a pretty important file um exam day checklist that's the one we just went over and there are a few videos, um, right? Video about a walkthrough. Um, I think this is the one we watched. Five steps to do before. It's kind of these in video form, and the rules about you know cheating and how to do everything. Um, so, you know, preparing probably a little too late on that one, but I'll post this. You know, just good to, good to know. So, I know I spent a long time on that, but it's just it's important. You know, I want to make sure everyone's ready for this everyone's passing um another thing they said if you are opening it on a chromebook is to make sure if you have in chrome they're like the chrome extensions right um i don't really have too many on here right now um i think i have ultra surfer for at school um but i don't have really anything else um so the big thing with the, the chrome extensions is if you have Grammarly as an extension for your English class, make sure you just go into um, settings, um, extensions, 
And then on Grammarly, like here's Google Docs, you would just turn Grammarly off. So if you have Grammarly, you know, turn Grammarly off. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's going to, I guess it's going to mess with, with the upload process. So that's all of that. Okay. Um, now, the first thing I wanted to do is just to, before we do anything, um, we had that you got to know assignment. And I won't spend too much time on this. It was homework. Um, I had posted the answers for you guys. Um, and we had even talked about, you know, if we had questions uh, before our mock on Saturday. Or Friday, or maybe it was on the Friday session that we talked about those. Um, but I do want to just make sure if we do have any more questions on... Um, so here's that answer key. If we do have any more questions on any of these A through... You know, whatever problems one two three four that we ask them now um, anyone here who um, does have questions on those on these you gotta know and if I'm not getting any questions um, the big thing that I want to tell everyone watching the video and um, who might watch watch me the one I post later is make sure this is one of the most important files just for these are essentially every single question here is matching up to a topic that might be on the AP exam right all of these are taken essentially from you know hopefully making it easier to understand what they're asking but they're all um, basically tying directly to um, a question that could be asked on our AP exam. So if you have, um, if you haven't gone over the answers yet, I'm not going over them. That's that's your job. But if you have not gone over all these answers yet, um, that's one of the best things you could probably do today, is go over these answers. And if you do it and you just have to send me an email, um, or text me, hey, Mister, you are sorry I didn't do it earlier, but I just realized I really have no clue how to do 3K. Can you explain it to me? then I'll go back and, and help you out with that. So um, it looks like we do have one question here um, and that's 4G, okay? Um, so four gave us this, um, this D, DWDT, right? Which is a, one of those differential equation questions. And 4G says, for the particular solution, um, evaluate W of zero and explain the meaning of W of zero in the context of the problem. Were you guys able to do 4F, Jesus and Nathan? Okay, so um, yeah, 4F, we kind of need need to be able to do 4F to do 4G. I'm um, sorry, I had to run to the other room and grab something. Um, so this is um, also, you know, help with what I was showing on Saturday with that, that calculator. Um, Nathan, I know you weren't, you weren't here for that, um, but after you take your second mock, I'll, I'll send you the video where we go over the, the calculator piece as well. Um, so we can kind of check our answer for 4F on our calculator. Like I said, we want to make sure that, you know, the work, we're not getting points if we don't show our work by hand. Um, but at the same time, the calculator is going to really help us make sure we're getting each of those steps right. So we need to know what steps to do by hand, but we can use our calculator too. Go ahead and make it a little bit easier on us. So I'm going to get another page to work with. And we are going to do some new stuff right after this. So if you felt like this was an easy question, just hang in there and we'll be getting to the, the new stuff in a minute. So the DWDT equals 
2t times w minus 9. So we're going to divide both sides by w minus 9, right? Anything with a w, uh, if it's in parentheses or if it has like w minus 3, w plus 2, right? You have to divide that entire thing. All right, and then multiply both sides by, oops, dt. So you get 1 over w minus 9 equals 2t dt. That's the part you have to do on your own, okay? Um, there's no getting around that. You have to do that on your own. This is worth one point. Okay, or should be worth one point. Then next, we're going to take the integral of both sides. Um, I somehow forgot my dw in there. Uh, so this should have had 1 over w minus 9 dw. And then this is where we can start using our calculator um, to help us out. So, right, we have 1 over w minus 9 integral. So we're going to you come in here, integral. one over w minus nine dw oops there we go and we get ln of w minus nine um that is why it's important by the way to make sure we we have our correct lettering otherwise we're going to get something weird so ln of w minus nine equals hopefully you don't have to type in 2t as an integral on your calculator but you can but i'm going to type it in just to show you that we do have to uh, make sure that we add on the plus C. Because if we type in 2T, it's going to give us T squared, right? 2T squared over 2. They did not give plus C. But on here, you need to make sure that you're adding plus C. This can be anywhere from 1 to 3 points, right? Usually it's 1 or 2 points. Um, a lot of times it's 1 point for the left side integral and 1 point for the right side integral. But you need to have that plus C or you know, you're basically don't get any points from here on out. Um, next is to solve. And so this we can actually solve one of two ways. We can actually just, um, we can use the whole differential equation thing that I showed on Saturday, or we can actually just use the solve button. Right now by hand, we want to try to do as much as we can by hand. Um, but I'm going to kind of use my calculator to, to figure out what am I trying to get to. So one option is actually to just go to menu. And I didn't show this on, on Saturday, but it, it works the same way. Um, menu algebra solve and just come up here and grab ln of w minus 9 equals t squared. But we need t squared plus c. You need to make sure that we have that plus c. And then we're trying to isolate for w. And so they're giving us w equals 9 minus t squared plus c or w equals 9 plus uh, the t squared, e to the t squared plus c. And the reason we're getting this plus or minus is because of that ln. Um, if we kind of assume that ln is positive, and the way we would do that is just getting rid of the, the absolute value, we see that we just have the, the positive side. And um, one way to figure that out is with this initial condition. Right, W of 2 is giving us a positive answer of 10. Um, and so we, we should be getting our positive side. Um, so anyways, if we do E to both sides, um, let's see if we can get to that answer. So E to both sides, that cancels. W minus 9 equals, we bring the C down with these. C E to the T squared. And then we're going to add 9 over. So W equals C E to the T squared plus nine. And that's what we have here. And this was not a hard one, uh, I think at all to, to get to, but on some of the ones that are a little bit trickier by hand, um, we can do that. Now, the other option was this uh, under calculus, going all the way down to differential equation solver. And then in differential equation solver, um, in this case, we would put W prime equals 2T times W minus 9. Um, let's make sure we put a times in here. And our independent variable is T, dependent variable is W. It's kind of like X and Y, right? If you want to just use X and Y, you can. And then um, we can just hit OK. And they'll give us the same thing. C1 E to the T squared plus 9. 
Um, now, these are the same, right? The difference with the plus C and my C1 is that the C1 moved to the front, they're equal. So this is how I wrote it um, on, on ours, and it's the same thing. Now, if we go back to menu, calculus, and differential equation solver, right, we can actually do that same thing, but this time with, again, make sure we're putting in the times. Um, This time with that initial condition, which was w of two equals 10. So um, oh, we gotta write that way, w of two equals 10, right? We're writing it the way that uh, they have in this example. We'll press okay, enter. Um, Let me try that one more time. Just I'm gonna use it with X's and Y's because sometimes they don't like the, the different lettering. So I'm just gonna change this to Y prime equals right two X times Y minus nine. Um independent would be X, dependent would be W. I don't know if I if I'd written something wrong. Um oops, would be Y. Y of two equals 10. There we go. Um, so they're showing here um, that that's the final answer we would get to. And so we can kind of use that as what we need to get to. Now for us, if we're just doing it by hand, um, right at this point, W of two was 10. So we can plug in 10 for W, two for T, two squared is four, oops, plus nine. Subtract, we get one equals C e to the four. Divide, we get one over e to the fourth equals C. Um, and that's e to the negative four as well. So that means this becomes W equals one over e to the fourth times e to the t squared plus nine. And that's our answer. Okay, now looking at what our calculator gave us, um, we have e to the x squared minus four, right? t squared, really W equals e to the t squared minus four. Um, those are the same because this is e to the negative four and then e to the negative four times e to the t squared would become e to the t squared minus four. So those are the same. You don't need to ever get here. Um, but if you wanted to use your calculator, you could kind of be using it. Um, so however we do this. The other thing is, you know, you can, and if you've been watching the AP videos, a lot of times what they'll do is actually when they're way up here in this step that I had in red, they'll plug it in. So ln of w minus nine equals t squared plus c, you can plug in your initial condition here um, and get ln of 10 minus nine is one equals two squared plus c. Ln of one goes to zero, you get four plus c, and so you get negative four equals to c. A lot of times this is actually easier to plug in up here. So it's not a bad idea to plug in and up there because a lot of times it's an easier answer. That means we have ln of w minus nine equals t squared minus four. We'll do e to both sides. w minus nine equals e to the t squared minus four. w equals e to the t squared minus four plus nine, which is the answer our calculator had. So heck, if you know, you plug it in right in that first step, sometimes that ends up being the easiest place to plug it in. So it's not a bad idea to do that. So however we did it, um, you know, I think that I've explained that a, a quite a few different ways, but it's just because I, I really wanna make sure these are hard questions for us, but they're worth so many points that I wanna make sure we, we have a lot of ways we can answer this, right? So we have W equals E to the T squared minus four plus nine. And again, please, I'm showing you guys how to do this on your calculator because I want you have to have a way to check your answer and I want you to have a way to get to this final answer. But I also need to need to make sure that you guys realize, oh, I know what I did wrong up here. I just had typed these in backwards. I typed in T for my 
deep and w so i type those in backwards so um but i want to make sure that you have a way to get to these final answers but you're not going to get any points if you just immediately write this right if you just wrote this as your answer you would get like a zero out of six you'd be failing this question so you're getting the points for all this work along the way right we're getting one point for separating it we're getting maybe one or two points for writing these antiderivatives you're getting another point up here you'll say we did it this way in blue you're getting another point when you plug in to, uh sorry when you plug in 10 and 2 right when you plug in that condition and you're getting another point for say solving it so um that's a lot of points along the way that we don't want to miss okay now letter g then asked okay now that we've done that now what is um w of zero and then explain w of zero and the meaning of this problem so w of zero now we're just going to plug in All right e to the zero is negative four plus nine and that's your answer that's w of zero and then to explain it in the meaning well we need to go back to dw and figure out what did dw say well it says actually it even just tells us where w is measured in the number of watermelons and t is in weeks so this means at time equals zero weeks or you could say you know the beginning or the initial there are e to the negative four plus nine watermelons so that's that one okay um so anything else with this uh you got to know stuff what i'm gonna have you guys do is if you want me to go over any other ones just text me email me and we'll, we'll go over them individually okay um so the next thing i kind of want to show is um this was posted but they didn't go over it in the um friday the friday ap video um but it's this kind of circuit practice of um just basically they're saying the exam is tomorrow are you ready um have some fun with this final circuit i kind of want to just do these together and just kind of talk about them because they're they're good last minute practice stuff and it's going to get us thinking about a lot of different stuff so um write the equation to this tangent line right x1 is 1 y1 we would plug in so negative 3 times 1 squared plus 5 times 1 plus 1 negative 3 plus 5 is 2 plus 1 is 3 and for m we're going to do f prime of x equals negative 6x plus 5 so m is negative 6 times 1 plus 5 right we plug in 1 so we get negative 1 y minus 3 equals negative 1 times x minus 1 if you want to solve for y you can but i like to just leave it like that y minus 3 equals negative 1 times 1.2 minus 1 if we want to change that y to f of 1.2 we can negative 0 0.2 when we add 3 that's going to give us approximately 2.8 okay. um, I don't know what the heck her answer is doing up there but uh, I think she messed that up um, so anyways um, next one find the answer uh, find the instantaneous rate of change of g of x equals ln of x plus 3 right this is uh, just chain rule again you have a calculator you know probably do this on your calculator but it's something we should be able to do by hand as well so 1 over x plus 3 chain rule times the derivative of x plus 3 which is just 1 so this gives us 1 over 1 half plus 3 which is uh, a great answer you can just leave it just like that now if you want to simplify right um, that's 6 over 2 so 1 over seven halves which is two sevenths oh, okay i see what's happening she's uh she's having the answers on a on another spot so that two sevenths is over here um all right here we have u sub u equals four minus x squared du equals negative two x while this won't be on there it's still good to know u sub for that stuff where we have like f prime of two x right we talked about a lot of u sub with this where we do u equals two x du is 
2. So we end up with 1 half f prime of u du. Or, sorry, with our plus c or with our endpoint. So it we, we do need to be able to do u sub. Um, anyways, coming back up here, this is going to give us... Um, we have the x part, we don't have negative 2. So I'm going to multiply inside by negative 2, outside by negative half. This is going to give us negative half integral of the square root of u, du, plug in our endpoints, 4 minus 0 is 4. Um, 4 minus 2 squared is 0. If you want to flip your endpoints back and, you know, put a negative, you know, it would be, good, be a double negative, you can. I'm not going to. So this is negative 1 half integral from 4 to 0 of u to the 1 half du. Again, you can use your calculator to solve this. Um, negative 1 half times u to the 3 halves over 3 halves will be 2 thirds u to the 3 halves from 4 to 0. This gives us negative 1 third. 0 to the 3 halves is just 0. Minus negative 1 third. 4 to the 3 halves, square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8. So this gives us positive 8 thirds. Alright, um, next one we have um, is if y equals tangent of x over 3, right? So the derivative, right? First we're going to do y prime. Derivative of tangent is secant squared x over 3 times 1 third. I know we haven't done those uh, derivatives of the trig stuff in a long time. You have a calculator, so that's kind of kind of why. Um, but we get this is 1 third secant squared of pi over 6, right? Because pi over 2 divided by 3. And then on our table, right, um, this is kind of like having 1 over cosine pi over 6 squared. Right, cosine of pi over 6 on your table is square root of 3 over 2. So this is 1 over 3 times square root of 3 over 2 squared. And that's a great answer. Actually, this would have been a good answer as well. Um, you could keep simplifying it, but I'm not going to. Um, integral of 1 over x is ln of x from 1 to e. Making sure that we know that ln of e is 1 and ln of 1 is 0, so this is 1 minus 0, or just 1. Um, we got quotient rule, very important to know how to do quotient rule. Uh, y prime equals low d high minus high d low. Look at all the parentheses I'm using, that's important. If you don't have these parentheses, you're going to get this question wrong, over ln of x squared. Um, and here, I would just plug in e right now. Um, so ln of e squared times 1 minus e squared minus 5 times 1 over e squared all over ln of e squared squared. That cancels to 2. That cancels to 2. So we get 2 minus e squared minus 5 times 1 over e squared all over 2 squared becomes 4, and that's a good answer. If you want to multiply everything by e squared, you can, but better would just be leave that or type it into a calculator and let the calculator simplify it. Um, right, your calculator, when you type this in, will just simplify it by default. Um, find dy dx. Um, so again, I showed this, you know, you have to do this by hand, right? So d dx, d dx ddx, but I'm going to show how we can check it on our calculator. So 2x plus 2y dy dx equals 0. And we can solve for dy dx, isolate it, but anytime we're plugging in, I just plug in immediately. So it says 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, plus 2 times 12 is 24 dy dx equals 0, add the 10 over, divide by 24, and we get 10 over 24, or 5 over 12. And um, on our calculator, right, this is something that I was showing you guys 
um, as well on Saturday, where we have menu, jumping down to calculus, and going way down to implicit differentiation. And we'll just type it in exactly how we see it, x squared plus y squared. equals 169 and then comma x comma y always comma x then comma y and this would give us the dy dx equals but we didn't want the dy dx equals with x's and y's we wanted it with um, at 512 and this is where I told you guys we have to do something a little bit weird we have to do at x equals negative 5 and then I'll show it in two steps because it's a little easier then once I get this grab this guy and do at y equals 12. That's a little bit easier than trying to do it all at once. Um, the way I was showing it the first time was saying you could do this whole thing in parentheses and then outside of that parentheses at y equals 12. I think that's a little tougher, right? Um, I would rather just do them the first one, plug in x equals negative 5, then the second one, plug in y equals 12. Uh, but Again, you're not going to get points for just going straight to the answer. Like, that's zero points. You need to have shown your work along the way. All right. Um, find the area between the graph of 3x squared plus x and the x-axis. Uh, again, area is not really on here, but integrals are. So being able to do the integral um, from 0 to 1. Right, 3x cubed over 3, x cubed plus x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. 1 cubed is 1 plus 1 half minus 0. So that's our answer. Um, here, another one of these differential equations, right? Anytime we see something like this, um, we know we're doing the separating and integrating. So y dy equals x squared dx. y squared over 2 equals x cubed over 3 plus c, right? Because we did the integral of both sides. And what I was saying earlier is maybe we just want to practice plugging in here. So if we plug in here, 1 squared over 2 equals 0 cubed over 3 plus C. 1 half equals C, nice and easy. So now we have y squared over 2 equals x cubed over 3 plus 1 half. Let's multiply everything by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 y squared equals 2 thirds x cubed plus 1 so y equals the square root of 2 thirds x cubed plus 1 and then to get h of 3 that means um, we're going to plug in 3 so square root of 2 thirds times 3 cubed plus 1. 3 cubed is 27, but divided by 3 goes back to 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. So square root of 19. And showing this on our calculator, um, right, the, you know, we can do each integral by hand um, and use the solve button um, like I did before. So, right, integral of y dy, y squared over 2 integral of x squared dx and then we're going to use the solve button right menu algebra solve y squared over 2 equals x cubed over 3 plus c and then we're solving for um, y we're solving for y and we get something nasty because that's c um, and you know, two-thirds x cubed plus, um, you know, I don't really see that in here. So I don't know if we really like this at all. Um, but what we can do is we can say, well, why don't we solve this um, at uh, x equals zero. And then why don't we go back up and take this and do um, it says for at y equals right it was zero three uh, one 
0 comma 1. So now it's a lot easier and now we're, we're getting a C, um, some kind of a C. So that's kind of a little bit interesting, but this solve button um, can get funky. So if you get that, you know, maybe an easier thing here is calculus, differential equation solver, probably should have just done this to start with, um, where we had y prime equals, this is this initial, x squared over y. So x squared, again, the divided by doesn't do pretty fun. It just gives you divided by y. Independent is x, dependent is y. And our condition, right, was at um, x equals 0, y equals 1. So y of 0 equals 1 was our condition. And they gave us as y squared equals 2 third, 2x cubed over 3. They didn't actually square root it. I think the reason they didn't square root it is because, and I didn't mention this over here, um, technically, when I square root this, technically we have plus or minus square root of two thirds x cubed plus one. But the way we pick out, is it the positive or the negative case is, hey, if we plug in zero, we get positive one. So since we're getting positive one when we plug in zero, right? That means we want the positive case. Um, and so your calculator doesn't really know how to determine that. So that's why it, it just left it as squared because they were gonna say it's up to you to figure out if we're using the positive or the negative case. I think that's why this solve got so nasty as well. Um, so this is a little bit easier, but we can see that matches up with our answer, okay? Um, so don't use this as a crux. You know, what I would recommend is if you wanna use the integrals, great. Um, the solve button probably isn't that great, but this differential equation solver can at least get you on the right track. All right. Um, limits, right? Um, and this is a limit to infinity. So remembering those rules in case they pop up, right? Same thing as like horizontal tangent line. Sorry, horizontal asymptote. If a horizontal asymptote pops up, same thing. Where we're thinking if the top's bigger, you know, numerator's bigger, it's going to infinity or negative infinity. If the top and bottom are the same, it's going to that A over B. And if the denominator is bigger, it's going to zero, right? And in this case, X cubed is our biggest. So this is just going to zero. And then, then lastly, um, is this guy we plug in um, zero and it looks like we're gonna get square root of four is two minus two over zero. So that's L'Hopital's, but like we said, we have to split this L'Hopital's, what we were talking about in the video, to get credit. So square root of 4 plus h minus 2. Um, and that goes to 2 minus 2 is 0. And we're going to do the same thing for the bottom. For the denominator, right, we're writing these each individually. And so now we can say by L'Hopital's, the limit as h approaches zero of square root of four plus h minus two over h equals the limit as h approaches zero of one over two square root of four plus h chain rule times one over one. And when we plug in zero here, we get one over two square root of four plus zero is four over one is just itself, which is one over two times two is one fourth. So that's our answer there. Um, so that's that. Um, Nathan, I know you didn't watch the video. Please, please, please um, make sure I'm gonna send you that video later. You review this. Uh, the AP came out with a statement saying that they're not gonna, if you just put equals zero over zero, they're not gonna give you any credit. That they want you to show the limit of each the top and the bottom separately. Um, so there's that, um, kind of couple last things. And, uh, you know, this is, this guy's going to be totally optional. It's just another thing that, you know, if you want some extra practice, um, I have this mega FRQ. Um, it's basically just, uh, you know, let F be a differentiable function, um, with F of zero equals three, F of four equals negative seven. Suppose that for any number, the average value is f of zero plus b over two. Um, 
And so kind of that given, and this is the hard part of this question, is that this given is, right, what would be the average value would be 1 over b minus 0, integral from 0 to b of f of x dx. And they're saying this is equal to f of 0 plus f of b over 2. So that was given to us. Um, and you know that's something that they've told us. So we can use that. Um, and it's a little bit weird. Um, so, you know, in, in number one, it says find the integral from 0 to 4 of f of x. Right? Well, it says also the graph of the continuous function g, the derivative of k, is comprised of a semicircle. So at least for anything with f of x, this graph has nothing to do with it. Um, don't get confused and be like, oh, I can just do the area under the curve. It's not. Right? Um, this graph has nothing to do with it. We just have to actually use this average value formula. So we're going to actually literally just have to say, okay, well, 1 over... 4 minus 0, integral from 0 to 4 of f of x because of the average value formula would be equal to, right, f of 0 plus f of b, which in this case is 4, over 2. f of 0 was given, it was 3. f of 4 was given, it was negative 7. So this means 1 fourth integral from 0 to 4 of f of x dx equals... 3 minus 7 is negative 4 over 2. Multiply 4 to both sides because we're trying to isolate for the integral because that's what we're solving for. So the integral from 0 to 4 of f of x dx would be negative 8. And that's kind of the start of this question. Um, the next one uses that average value again. Um, part B asks us to... Um, then find f of x and part b is a little bit tough but basically it says using part b and this is probably more written in a bc manner so i'm going to kind of give us a hint on part c is we have f prime of x equals f of x minus 3 over x um but you know f prime of x is the same as dy dx f of x is the same as y. So really, you know, they, they probably on a, b would rewrite it for us this way. So this is a differential equation question that we just did. So this is our starting point. So you will multiply both sides by dx, divide both sides by y minus 3. You need to divide by the whole y minus 3. And we can use the initial condition from the beginning, which was f of 4 equals negative 7. And again, you can plug that in as soon as you want to. Um, so there's that one. And then going from here, now they're talking about some new, you know, using part C, if Q of X is 5X squared minus 12X, um, you know, find this integral. Uh, so basically, right, um, this one is kind of nasty, but I would just, honestly, I would just use your calculator. Um, or skip it. You know, this might be a good one to skip. Um, but the next one I think is a really good one. This is product rule and um, it's product rule both with, you know, basically using this statement here, which was how to find F prime, right, which is good, and using the graph and finding G and G prime on the graph um, with the slope. So I think D is a really bad question that I would probably skip. But on the flip side, E is a really great question that I would really recommend doing. Um, and then F, same thing. F is really kind of the same concept, but E was with product rule. F is with chain rule. So again, really great question. Uh, and G, when is, um, on what intervals is the graph of k both decreasing and concave down? This is a pretty good good thing. And this is where it says um, g, the derivative of k. So g is the derivative of k. That means k prime of x equals g of x. Right? Um, just making sure we know that's kind of, again, our starting point for this. 
So where is k decreasing and concave down? Well, decreasing would just be where it's below the axis. Concave down would be where it's decreasing. So where is this graph below the axis and decreasing? What intervals? Um, h, if k of negative 5 equals 11 halves, find the absolute maximum. Right first step, as soon as we see that, k prime equals 0. Figure out where is k prime 0. Well, it's the zeros here, negative 5, negative 3, 1, and 5. So now we're going to make a, a candidates chart, right? Um, x and k of x. And so we're going to use negative 6, negative 5, negative 3, positive 1, 5, and 6. And then our formula to get to this would be k of x equals. Now, they gave us this value. So to go back from k to an integral, we need to say that it's k of negative 5, because that's what we know about, plus the integral from um, negative 5 to x of g of x dx, right? It's not just this right side, because they didn't tell us that. We need to add on our starting point. So kind of our generic formula becomes k of x equals 11 halves plus the integral from negative 5 to x of g of x dx. And then we would just be doing all of these areas, right? Starting at 5 you know, to 6 would be this area. From 5 to 5 would be 0, right? So we know this one, or negative 5 to negative 5. So we know this one is positive 11 halves. Then from 5 to negative 3, you know, adding 11 halves with that area. Um, and once you actually do that, what you can do for each successive integral is you can just add on that integral. In this case, it's a negative. And add on that integral. And then add on that integral. And you'll kind of be doing them one by one, if that makes sense. Um, so you're kind of just doing the integral of the next guy and adding it to your answer. Right? So you all do negative 3 and 1 for us. So essentially, right, the, the triangle up here. Um, this area here, 1 half times 2 times negative 3 is 3, right? It's negative because it's below the axis. So this guy's just going to become negative 3 plus 11 halves. Then for this next section, right, this is a semicircle. I'll pick a new color. Um, Radius is 2, so 1 half pi times 2 squared becomes 2 pi. We're going to just add that to the above answer, negative 3 plus 11 halves. Now minus 2 pi because it was below the axis. Then the next one we would do this area and add it to the previous one, if that kind of makes sense. Because we're starting at negative 5, right? We've already done this, so we're just adding on whatever we're doing next. Um, this one's a lot of work, um, so if you don't want to do the whole question, that's fine, but just, you know, maybe even look through the answer and make sure that you understand the concept, okay? Um, and the answer key, um, actually, and I, I didn't make this, I'm going to be honest with you guys, in the answer key, um, I don't know, you know, we, we do need to make sure we're, we're okay with the explanation, um, but in the answer key, what, what happened was actually they wrote out all of these as, you need to write out all of these as candidates, and the, the person writing the answer key didn't. So you need to write all of those as candidates. But he did go ahead and eliminate a lot of them because we're looking for an absolute max. So if we kind of thought of a number line analysis, and again, the number line's only going to be to help us. It's not going to do anything else but help us. Um, it cannot be used for your justification. So negative 5, negative 3, 1, and 5. We'll see that it's above the axis, so it's increasing. Below the axis, decreasing, decreasing, above the axis, increasing, and above the axis, increasing. So if we kind of look at you know, what that might look like is that we're increasing, decreasing, decreasing, increasing, and increasing. So actually, we only have two possibilities. Our only two possibilities are 6 and negative 5. 
those are only two possibilities at all. You could actually get rid of all of the other points um, and just test six and negative five. The issue is you have to explain that and you have to state why you're canceling them out. So you're saying like x equals negative six cannot be absolute max because k increases from negative six to negative five. Right, and then you'd say, you know, negative three and negative one can't be because k decreases, and um, five would not be because k increases further from five to six, so six has to be higher. So, um, you know, you you would need a good justification for that. Um, for each of k double prime of negative five and k double prime of two, find the value or explain why it doesn't exist. Well, in order to do this, you need to write out, okay, k prime of x equals g of x k double prime of x equals g prime of x. I really like this question because it's talking about differentiability. And so on here, right, at negative five and two, saying is, you know, basically what is the slope, right? Because g prime is our, our slope. So if it's a kink or a corner or a cusp, it would be d and e. Um, and if it's not, then you're just going to do the algebra one slope rise over run. Um, and then lastly, find the x coordinate of each point of inflection. We've gone over this, right? Where does it change between increasing and decreasing, but making sure we're writing k prime of x equals g of x. So this guy's going to be optional. It's just, you know, if you want something to practice, um, I think this hits a lot of good points. You know, it didn't hit Riemann sums, but we've done so many of those. Um, so I'll kind of post this with the answer key. Just if you're kind of looking for, hey, I just want to do another FRQ on my own. Um, you know, I'll post that with the answer key. But again, it's it's totally optional. Now, something that is, again, optional, but I think is even more important. Kind of like if you're going to do one thing today for calc. And I'm going to say this and then we'll pretty much be done. Um, if you're going to do one thing at all for calc, I would really, really recommend watching this uh, final video if you haven't, okay? Um, they do hit a lot of good things here. And one thing that they said that, right, the beginning, they're going over some of the test, test stuff, which is great. Um, but then what I wanted to get at is right here in the video. Okay, this is... Um, what they said is these are all of the topics that they did not cover in the first two mock exams, right? So in the first, remember they had said they had this list of questions. Um, these are the topics they didn't cover. And so what happens is um, they actually show that they do one final problem where they go over um, estimating the derivative from a table Particle speeding up, tangent line over underestimate, Riemann sum over underestimate. And then I think we're pretty good with those. Um, overlapping intervals, like where are two particles going the same direction or the opposite direction, that's a pretty good thing. Um, slope fields we went over um, on Saturday. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be tested. It's just really hard for them to test that. Um, not being differentiable at a point, I think we can do pretty well. Um, intervals of concavity, increasing, decreasing, I think we can do pretty well. And the overlapping intervals is kind of the same thing here. So if you watch this video, you'll get it. Derivative and inverse is just kind of make sure that's um, something you'll know, go over that homework if you need to. Um, if you have questions with it, ask me or watch a YouTube video. Um, but derivative of an inverse is something that, um, you know, we have on our cheat sheet as well. So... Anyways, they basically do one one FRQ with this. Um, and so this FRQ, everything that they kind of boxed in orange, they're going over in this FRQ. So it's basically one additional FRQ. Um, somewhere around like 34 minutes, they, they start doing that circuit that, that we just did. She only does like two questions from it, which is why I did the whole thing for us. And everything else is just kind of, um, you know, you don't have to watch. So, you know, basically once you finish this question, you should be pretty good. Um, but, and if you want that question, um, I'll, I'll post the question, the blank version of their question, 
So what you may want to even do is, if you have enough time, do the FRQ on your own, and then watch the video where they basically do it, um, you know, to get the answers and to go over it. So if you're gonna do one thing today, I'd probably do that. Um, you know, that's the official AP um, team that's, you know, doing their, their review. So I think that would be a good video to, to do. Um, then finally, you know, if you have more time and you want to do more FRQs, great. Uh, I've said a bunch of times that the number one that I would do on my own and make sure I understand on my own is the 2019 exam. If you have any questions on the 2019 exam, please email me or text me today. Uh, and I can go over those, but I think that's kind of the number one I do on my own. Um, other exams, right, like searching up the 2018 exam, doing the packet are great. But then I need you guys to promise, 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 promise me that you're going to go to bed early tonight. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not setting your bedtime. You guys know yourselves, but I don't want to, you know, hear about anyone being up until 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Tonight's not the night to do that. If you try to cram until 3 a.m., what's going to happen is you're not going to be at, you know, your peak abilities tomorrow. And that cramming is actually going to hurt you more than it helped you. Um, they've done studies that actually as you sleep, your brain can sometimes learn some of that stuff. So what's good if you want to is like, you know, study right before you go to bed. And then as you sleep, your brain should solidify some of that um, info. But when I say before you go to bed, I'm talking early, like 9 to 11 p.m. Um, you know, or earlier if, if that's you. Um, and then tomorrow morning, what I do want is I want everyone to at least check into the Zoom quickly just to kind of, you know, that way I don't have to call home and make sure you're ready. So tomorrow morning, the Zoom, I'm going to be in there from 930 to 1030. Okay. Um, you can do that entire Zoom. You can show up from 930 to 932 and just say, hi, you are, I'm ready. I have my key. I'm going to, you know go make breakfast. You can show up from 1025 to 1030 and just have me wish you good luck at the end of it. Um, you know, any time at all during the Zoom, you can check in. Um, probably at about 1020, you know, if you're there, I would like you to be there because you know, at about 1020, what I kind of wanted to do is um, usually if we're in, in class, we kind of do a class photo. Um, and, you know, that's something that, you know, um, I'd like to start a tradition of putting those up on the wall, but I, I just have been lazy and I've never printed them out. Um, but we kind of do a class photo and then I just kind of give you like a good luck speech. Um, you can either on Zoom, I'll, I'll kind of take a photo of the, the participant. So if you want to turn on your camera, great. If you're like, no, nah, I just woke up out of bed and I haven't showered, um, then I can just have a picture of your name. Um, but kind of, if you're there at 10 20, we'll get that. Um, if you're not there at 10 20, no worries, but I do want everyone to just check in with me. Um, just any last minute questions, make sure you're all right, make sure you're ready. And, um, that's that. If you don't check in by 10 30, um, like I'm going to have a checklist, I'm going to call, call home and I don't want to do that. Um, it'll, I'll be annoyed. So any questions for me? before we, we leave. So again, kind of my checklist for you guys, um, just kind of my own personal checklist for you guys to make sure you do do well tomorrow. Um, and then we'll, we'll log off is, firstly have your prepared, um, your prepared cheat sheet. Right, which means um, my my version of this would be, you know, Mr. Yort's cheat sheet, and then um, basically any and all examples that you want. So, any example questions? Um, it could be like full FRQs. You could literally have the mock exams, right? Like you could just have the mock exams with the answers um, out. Whatever examples you're like, hey, I wanna, if they ask this question, I've got it right here to look at. You know, this is how they did it, I'm gonna do it this way. So, 
that's there. Then the next thing is your um, prepared, um, like basically like sheets to write on, right? With your initials, ID, page number. And then the third thing is your calculator. And then I would have like two to three pens or pencils just in case something happens, you got an extra one. And then here's a big one that they have not mentioned, but I think is great is right now. You can do this right now. As soon as you finish watching this video or you finish the zoom is on your phone, I would do a phone alarm um, and do two of them for tomorrow. Okay. The first phone alarm is right. The exam starts at 11 is going to be 11 25 a.m. right that alarm goes off you're going to look at the screen and see how much time you have left uh, if the exam for whatever reason had technical issues and it says you still have seven minutes left then great but at least this is your alarm to be like hey i need to double check this this time right because you might get so into the groove of it all of a sudden you're forgetting to look up at the screen and you thought that you had five minutes left and you look up at the screen and you have 12 seconds left and you just failed the exam. So this alarm is like your fail safe. It goes off, look up at your time. And the second one, right? Exam two questions should start around 1130, right? So 15 minutes into that should be around 1145 AM, right? So you're gonna set two phone alarms for tomorrow. Um, and these are your that goes off, look at the screen, see how much time you have, start thinking about uploading. Okay. And then everything else is just, you know, um, whatever else they've told you. Right. But these are the things that they may not have said on some of the checklists. So, um, you know, and then lastly, if you don't hear it from me tomorrow, I really, I'm so proud of you guys. This year was weird as all get out. Um, but you guys are coming to these zooms. You've been continuing to learn. And I'm really confident. I know the AP test is scary, but I'm really confident that a lot of you guys, you know, all of you guys who have been coming are going to do very, very well. So that's it for me. Um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. And again, if you don't hear it from me tomorrow, good luck on the exam. And if you're taking Gov, good luck on Gov today. Um, I don't know if it already started or not. I really, I have no clue what time it is. Um, but if you're taking Gov, good luck, uh, or I hope you did well if you're watching this video late. All right, thanks guys. You guys can log out if you're you're still watching. We're we're done.